Coming home. From Halifax to Victoria, we are welcoming back the battle units. The Toronto Scottish, the Seaforth, the Black Watch, the RWRs, the South Saskatchewan, the West Nova Scotians. Every week the veterans return as the nation acclaims its son. the joy of reunion, there is no concern for the past. But tomorrow, and in the months to come, these veterans must find their places in the life of Canada. Out of every hundred returning servicemen, seven will go to work on the natural resources of the land. Most of these will take up farming, but many will establish themselves in occupations like commercial fishing. With other farmers and fishermen, they will produce food not only for Canada, but for Europe, where hunger is now the first great problem of peace. For the rich resources of Canada, its prairies, lakes and rivers and forests provide the real wealth of the nation and will provide employment in the peacetime building program. From the mines, the minerals to maintain the high industrial output Canada achieved during the war. About 18 out of every 100 servicemen plan to return to school. Half will go to high school and university to become chemists, lawyers, architects, executives of all kinds. The other half will learn new skills in vocational training schools or train on the job. The construction trades offer new opportunities for the returned man. It's estimated that about half a million housing units will be built in Canada in the next five years. Veterans will take their places as productive citizens for the reconstruction and prosperity of Canada. 68% of returning servicemen will require industrial or other urban employment. Many of these have jobs or businesses waiting for them. About one-third will have to find new jobs. A high level of employment is the key to the success of the whole rehabilitation program. It can succeed only as a mutual effort in which the veteran, the community, the government and industry all play their parts. But our men need more than jobs. They need the understanding and cooperation of all of us if they are to resume normal life as civilians. But among them are some who require special treatment. They are Canada's 25,000 disabled veterans, casualties who lost arms, legs, sight or hearing. In hospitals at key points across the Dominion, many of these men are now taking treatment and retraining that will return over 90% of them to full civilian life. The hospital staffs are well trained in the latest techniques of therapy and surgery. But the careful, patient skill of surgeons and the most up-to-date equipment science has devised still require effort and determination from the patient himself. 
Only by the combination of these can recovery be made. Veterans who have lost their sight can be trained to make full use of their remaining faculties. The Canadian National Institute for the Blind cooperates in teaching them to be self-sufficient and helps them to find suitable jobs. <laughs> Believing he could never hear again, the sudden sound of a voice brings him new life. as well as body must be made well. Fun and entertainment, which meant so much to troops overseas, is now brought to the hospitals by the same services and civilian units. Moving the injured limb is slow and sometimes painful. But the exercises that keep muscles nimble begin in the early periods of treatment. Through all the stages of recovery, hands and arms and fingers must be taught to work again. Physiotherapy made great strides during the war. Its discoveries are applied in restoring damaged parts of the body to usefulness. Made by specialists who are themselves amputees, the artificial limbs require expert fitting. And it's a great day when an amputee gets his new legs. First steps with the new limbs are slow. It's like learning to walk again with a different balance and control. But the men show the will to persevere. Tilting the teapot is no trick for the able-bodied, but the arm amputee must learn again to do the once simple everyday things. Some master the new arm so well, they can match normal dexterity, even in the art of writing. Casualty rehabilitation officers at the hospitals help the men in planning their future. When a veteran decides on an occupation, his treatment and retraining are pointed toward that goal. While the patient's treatment is progressing, machinery is in motion to help him toward a job. A special placement division conducts a continuous analysis of jobs to find work suiting the capacity of the discharged man. After months of treatment, this veteran is interviewed by a prospective employer. When he gets the job, he is back on the road to economic security. Canada's war casualties are finding useful occupations. Those already discharged have shown they can be self-sufficient. They need only the opportunity for suitable employment. They ask no special consideration, only a chance on an equal basis for the jobs they can handle. Industrial surveys indicate that a disabled man properly placed is as efficient as his able-bodied fellow worker. With an adequate job and the understanding of his family, the war casualty can look forward to leading a normal life. By his own effort, he has earned many times over security and the right 
to a brighter future.